Hi fellow sand lovers. In this video, we're going to take a step back and really try to figure out what are the categories and where they come from. And in order to do this, we need to take a look on the architectonic of science or the structure of science. Now, while we would want to formulate a structure for the sciences, all the sciences have things in common. They all want to observe the reality and uh, formulate new knowledge about the world. But the question arises how these different sciences relate to one another. And the architectonic of science is Peirce's answer to that question. It's a, uh, in the architectonic, Peirce explicitly shows the relations between different sciences. Now, how are the sciences then ordered? They are ordered uh, based on the generality of the science. Now, generality means uh, basically the same as how theoretical a science is. So the most general, most theoretical science is mathematics. And on the other end, we have the practical sciences, which are, uh, which are not so general. So, for example, uh, the art of how to build a good house is a practical science, or the art of how to share a sheep, or how to make a good omelette, are all basically uh, practical sciences. Now, the more general sciences, like mathematics, provides concepts and tools for the more basic sciences. And we can see this in that uh, all the other sciences can use mathematics as a tool. Uh, for example, the uh, guy who wants to build a house can use mathematics in order to check out that the edges are straight. or the cook who wants to make a good omelette can use mathematics to calculate the amount of salt in the omelette, for example. Uh, but there's also movement uh, in the opposite direction for the more, from the more basic sciences to the more theoretical ones. And there's a flow of observations, a flow of facts and data to the more theoretical ones. Now let's take a a bit different example here. Let's, let's uh, focus on the concept of process. Now, uh, various sciences are interested in various processes. For example, physics uh, observes physical processes like movement or radioactive decay. Uh, chemistry, on the other hand, observes chemical processes like rusting or dissolution. Uh, then psychology observes psychological processes like the development of uh, personality. And sociology observes sociological processes like urbanization. So there are all kinds of different sciences that all observe different kind of processes. But what is a process? What's the general concept uh, of what the general concept of process means? Uh, and to figure this thing out, that's a job for a more general science, and in this case, that science is philosophy. So philosophy has to figure out what the process, as a general concept, means. And uh, when that's figured out, or when we have a theory about what process means, that theory or that concept can be used in these more basic, more practical sciences of physics, chemistry, psychology and sociology. And they can now you know, use that uh, philosophical conception of process in their observation of their own more particular processes. But again, there is also the flow of observation and facts from the more basic sciences to the more theoretical ones. This is not one-way traffic. So now, 
when the when philosophy tries to make or tries to formulate uh, the general concept of process, they have to take account all the observations of different processes that all the other sciences have have made, so that that general concept of process includes all the various observations. So these various observations bring uh, data for the, for the philosophers to try to incorporate that all to one general concept of process. This is the basic idea. So the more theoretical and general sciences provide principles, concepts and function as a tools for the more basic sciences and the more basic sciences provide observations, facts and data to the more theoretical ones. And this is a symbiotic process. So it's not about which science is better than the other, which is more important or, or things like that. It just helps us to uh, order the whole of human knowledge into the structure of science. The whole of human knowledge is first divided into the science of discovery, the science of review and practical sciences. The first two sciences are theoretical, whereas practical sciences, well, practical. This means that the first two sciences are interested in general truths and pursue knowledge for its own sake and are therefore not directly guides for conduct. Practical science in turn is aimed towards practical purposes and it acts as a guide for conduct. Let's take a closer look on these sciences. The science of discovery is interested in knowledge without considering how this knowledge is used in practice. We'll take a closer look on this in a minute. Now, what about the science of review? The main purpose of the science of review is to form and systematize the whole of human knowledge using whatever the science of discovery has brought to light. The ordering of sciences is therefore the job of science of review. This is an important point because it shows that this ordering, what I'm now presenting, is not eternal or final. It is constantly changing as our science proceeds and evolves. Lastly, the practical science is a science that is used for particular purposes and as a tool for conduct. For example, navigation uses general sciences like mathematics, physics and meteorology for particular purposes, namely to get a ship from point A to point B. Or engineer uses mathematics, physics and chemistry in order to build particular buildings. But let's concentrate now on the science of discovery. The science of discovery is further divided into mathematics, philosophy and special sciences. Now, it is a common thing to say that mathematical knowledge is in some way more fundamental than knowledge from other sciences like philosophy, psychology or even physics. In a sense, this is true, but this idea needs some further clarification. Mathematics is a unique science in a couple of ways, and one of them is the fact that mathematics is not an empirical science. By that I mean that mathematicians do not empirically observe the world around us. While, for example, astronomers use all kinds of instruments to perceive the world as accurately as possible, mathematicians are not so interested in observing the reality around us. Instead, mathematics explores what is logically possible without making itself responsible for its actual existence. What the mathematicians do observe are the results of experiments on diagrams. 
mathematics draws necessary conclusions from possible hypotheses without inquiring whether these hypotheses correspond to any reality. In contrast to mathematics, philosophy is a positive science, which means that it observes the reality around us. It is interested not only what is logically possible, but also what is true. Therefore, philosophy depends on empirical observations. Philosophical observations do not need any particular skill or instruments. They are open to everyone because they are based on our universally recognized common experience. In other words, in order to be a philosopher, you don't have to go to any schools or courses, you don't need to buy any equipment or instruments, or even acquire any observational skills. You can just sit down and reflect your own experience. The third branch of science of discovery is the special sciences. The special sciences are also positive sciences, but they do not limit themselves to observations of common experience, but instead need special observations and special instruments. For example, astronomers use telescopes to observe the night sky, or biologists use microscopes to observe cells, or physicists use particle accelerators to observe small particles. In its entirety, special sciences are interested in discovering new facts about reality and formulating new laws for accounting for them. Philosophy is divided into phenomenology, normative sciences and metaphysics. Phenomenology is the study of what actually appears to the mind without inquiring does it convey truth or not. Phenomenology observes what is logically possible and present in the actual experience, here and now. So even if, as mathematics, it is not interested in the real validity of its objects, phenomenology is nonetheless a positive science insofar as it observes the actual experience. Normative sciences, which are further divided into aesthetics, ethics and logic or semiotic, study in a purely theoretical way the relationship of human feeling, action and thought to ends. In whole, they study the fundamental purposeful character of human conduct and thought. The third branch is metaphysics, which inquires what is real in its essential character. Now let's return to the basic question. Why should we order the sciences? What it even means that science has an order? As I briefly explained in the beginning of this video, the more general and theoretical sciences provide principles and concepts for the more practical and basic sciences. We can now apply this to the present architectonic. We can see that mathematics is the most general science. That means that it can provide useful tools and theoretical concepts to all other sciences. And this seems to be the case because the special sciences like physics, biology, chemistry and psychology use mathematics. Even philosophy uses mathematics, especially in logic. Now, the opposite is not true. Mathematics does not need concepts from other sciences. Mathematicians do not need concepts like cell, gravity, instinct or consciousness. But this does not mean that mathematics is indifferent to other sciences. Although concepts and tools flow only from the more theoretical science to the more practical science, the more practical science provides in turn facts and observations to the more theoretical sciences. Therefore, it is possible that new observations by other sciences may demand mathematicians to form new mathematical theories, 
but usually mathematics is one step ahead. In other words, there seems to be a lot of mathematical theories that, for now, have no practical purpose. What about the relationship between philosophy and special sciences? Are, for example, physics dependent on philosophical observations? Well, all special sciences are dependent on logic, because logic sets the rules and standards for scientific inquiry. It tells us how we should inquire the reality. We could also argue that special observations are nested inside our common observations and experiences. I want to again stress that this does not mean that philosophy is independent or indifferent to other sciences. We should remember that the more basic sciences provide facts to the more theoretical sciences. For example, the theory of relativity has philosophical implications. Although, in our common experience, it seems that space and time are uniform, physics has proven that space-time bends. This has, or at least it should have, profound effects on philosophical theories. In other words, physics has an effect on philosophy by providing new facts for it.